We're going to look at how you combine half equations now to give the overall redox equation. So the first thing we've been asked to do is write half equations for these two processes. So we've seen the second one before. We haven't seen this one yet. So this is the ethane dioate ion. So we're going to convert that to carbon dioxide. So let's start off. So what do we know? We know that C2O42- minus is turned into CO2. So the atoms don't balance. We've got two Cs, one C, four Os, two Os. So obviously a two there will sort the atoms out. So we don't need any H2O or H plus in this one. Charge wise, we've got a two minus charge on the left. We've got no charge on the right. So obviously it's two electrons required there. We've already seen the MnO4 minus one, so I'm just going to write that straight up, and there it is there. So how do we combine these two half equations to create the overall redox equation? Well, what we have to do is we, we're going to add the two equations together. So it's a bit like simultaneous equations in maths. So I'm going to number them. So this is number one. We'll call this one number two. When we add these two together, what we want is for the electrons to disappear. So we've got five electrons at the moment on the left on this one. We've got two on the right on this one. So what could we multiply these equations by to get the electrons equal? Well, it's obviously we need to get them up to 10. So we're going to multiply this equation by 5. And this half equation will be multiplied by 2. And we'll add them together. So we've got 5 C2 or 4 2 minus plus 2 MnO4 minus plus 16 H plus. I'll put the electrons in just so, so you can see that they will cancel. Um, 10 electrons. So that's everything on the left. Let's put the arrow in. So we've got two Mn2 pluses, eight waters. We'll go up to here now. So we've got 10 CO2s. And again, we've got 10 electrons. And you can see, hopefully, that the electrons are definitely going to cancel. So what's left is the redox equation. We'll just double check that it all balances it. It should do. So 5 times 2, so it's 10 carbons, 10 carbons. 4 times 5, so that's 20 oxygens plus another 8, so that's 28 oxygens. Well, we've got 8 there plus 20, that's 28, so that works. And 2 MNs, 2 MNs. I've already done those oxygens, 16 H's, 8 2's is 16, so the atoms balance. But we must also make sure the charges balance as well. So we've got 5 times 2 minus is 10 minus, plus another 2 minus, that's 12 minus, plus 16 plus, leaves 4 plus, we've got a total of 4 plus charge on the left, 2 2 pluses is obviously 4 plus, and the charges it equal each other. We'll just quickly look at the roles of each of these chemicals. So you can see I've written underneath each of these that they are acting as, this is acting as a reducing agent, this is acting as a um, oxidizing agent. So we'll look at the ethane dioate ion first. We'll keep an eye on its half equation. It's acting, I'm saying it's acting as a reducing agent. So what do reducing agents do? They donate electrons well, it's obviously donating those two electrons there. The oxidizing agent, what's its role? It's an electron acceptor. Yep, we've got accepting those five electrons there. Another sort of trick you can use, it's quite, it makes it very easy, this. Um, if this is the oxidation process, and this is acting as the opposite kind of agent, so... This is oxidation, so that's a reducing agent. This is reduction, so that's an oxidizing agent. 
I just want to finish with one more just to sort of explain one final point. So we've already seen these two half equations, so I'm not going to bother showing where they've come from. So we, we basically need to marry these two together to form the overall redox equation for the reaction between hydrogen sulfide and dichromate ions in acidic solution. So we're treating them as simultaneous equations and we want the electrons to disappear when we add the equations together, the half equations together. So we've got two electrons on the on the right of number one, we've got six on the left of number two. So obviously we need to get this up to six and then they'll cancel. So we need to multiply equation number one by three. So when we add that together, we're going to get three H2S plus Cr2O7 2 minus plus 14H plus. I won't bother putting the electrons in, you know that they're going to cancel. And we're over here now, so we've got 6H plus plus 3S. We're down to here now, plus 2Cr3 plus and 7 waters. So the point I want to make now is you can see that the, the H plus ion is on both sides of the arrow and you shouldn't leave it like that and quite often I see students leaving that as their final answer. Now that wouldn't score you the marks I'm afraid. So what we need to do is we need to simplify this. Now obviously they will cancel because there's more on this side and that will take that down to 8. We'll just check it balances. Um, 3, 2 is a 6, plus 8 is 14. 7 H's, 7 H2, sorry, is 14. So the hydrogens are sorted. 3 sulfurs, 3 sulfurs, that's fine. 2 chromiums, 2 chromiums, and 7 O's, 7 H2O's, that's given us 7 O's there. So the atoms are fine. Let's check the charge. Um, no charge, 2 minus with 8 plus obviously leaves 6 plus and 2 3 pluses 6 plus, yep, charges are fine as well. And we'll just finish by looking at the roles of the two different chemicals that we've been looking at. So the hydrogen sulfide, first of all, if we have a look at its half equation, what's it done? It's donated electrons. So an electron donor is a reducing agent. And the dichromate ion, what's that doing? Well, it's accepting electrons and oxidizing agents accept electrons. And that little trick that I showed you the sulfur in the H2S has been oxidized, so if this is an oxidation process, this chemical is the opposite kind of agent, so it's a reducing agent, and the chromium in the dichromate ion has been reduced, so this is an oxidizing agent. And if you remember what I said earlier about the hydrogen ions having to be cancelled down, um, the same goes for water as well. So sometimes you might see H2O on either side of the combined, when you combine the two half equations together. And again, the rule applies. You must give the overall redox equation in its simplest form. So if you have got water either side, please make sure you cancel that down, as just like we did with the hydrogen ion.